ever eat all my food, too. We just doing pal things? Palsy wowsies. Yeah, I was a little tuckered out. Happy birthday, bro. Well, good morning. Welcome to our Mountain Majesty. Things got a little hairy last night, evidently. Lots of rain, lots of wind, so. Cody, I think, unfortunately, his floorless, lightweight tarp system it might not have been ideal last night. I think one of his boots is wet, and by wet, like, soaked. It's a beautiful sunny day. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's cold, crisp, cool. It's Trev's birthday, and uh, we're gonna try to get him a birthday bowl today. Per usual, a little bit of a late start, but uh, kinda have to dry a few things out, get situated, and then we're gonna head further down the trail. We're starting to get in pretty deep. I don't know the exact mileage, but I would guess we are about uh, six and a half miles from the trailhead, where our trucks are, and I believe we're planning to go further to find more elk. We have been very, very close to punching a couple more tags. And honestly, if you think about how many days we've hunted versus how many encounters we've had, the numbers are really good. We uh, didn't hunt, obviously, when we took Ty's bull out, but otherwise, we're getting into elk every day with at least one opportunity per day, which is great. All you can ask for when you're hunting in a new area, but we're just gonna continue to hunt our way further. We have one waypoint in mind that we, I think, are trying to go explore, and see what it's all about. So that will be likely our destination of today. And then again, having camp on your back, you just end up where you end up. We ended up in possibly the prettiest camp spot of the trip so far. For Casey and I, we're like, man, half the fun, honestly, is just like finding a cool camp spot. Don't get me wrong, calling an elk is cool, but this is more than just trying to fill an elk tag. It's about an adventure, and it is about challenging yourself both physically and mentally, and then it's about great friendships. So, so far we are checking all those boxes we're winning and uh, frankly a capper would just be one or two more help so wish us luck okay oh my freaking gosh this freaking shark giant <laughs> September 16th today. I'm sure you can tell. It's already a little bit of change of scenery. We decided to come up in elevation, see if we can find some elk that are living up high. Less people, less roads. And uh, last night, if you watch yesterday's video, we glassed up a bull. He was way up in here, so we figured if he's here, there's gotta be more. But uh, from what I can tell, this first little burn, this basin right here seems to be pretty empty, so we're just gonna we're just gonna keep walking away from the roads, get into some of these thick timber pockets, and uh, try to turn something up. It's kind of fun hunting up here with all the colors. Super, super pretty. Bridget's got the the bow today. I've got the calls, decoys, and hopefully we can find something. But it's been pretty dang slow. We've got today's hunt and tomorrow morning's hunt, and then it's time to head back to Salt Lake. So hopefully we can turn something up before we gotta go home. But I can tell you one thing for sure is the uh, the rut is at least about two weeks behind, I'd say. That's all right, look at this view. They went that way. I think I heard them when I walked over there. Did you? I heard some noise. Making our way down the trail. Fresh elk track like that that's a good sign the program today is pretty much a repeat of yesterday it is a uh, bugle bugle repeat more bugles and our strategy because we have six of us is that uh, we're bugling as we're walking and doing some cow mews we literally sound like a herd of elk truly from we're making noise not really too concerned with that playing the wind and we've had three different scenarios where by doing so a bull that has been bedded has responded and then we've called him in so it's been working for us. We're gonna keep doing what has been successful and see if we can get Trevor a birthday bowl. Come along. Thanks for watching too, by the way.
down a plate of eggs, bacon, and sausage, but uh, this is Bridget's favorite French toast. And yeah, I'm gonna have four slices because they're so good. I'm gonna cover them in butter and syrup too. Now we're talking. <laughs> oh man, from the 90 day challenge to the I don't give a dang, eat whatever I want challenge. But it's hunting season, you know, we burn a lot of calories. That's the annual battle for me. All summer, I usually try to get in really, really good shape for the hunts. It's not like I'm falling out of shape, but during hunting season, I just enjoy camp food and eating healthy at times, but eating a little more than I would normally at other times, and a little bit of a finding a balance of both. With all the hiking, it seems to be just fine, but those are going in my belly real soon. <laughs> Guys, we just got done with our midday snack and uh, nap. It is three o'clock for the last two days. We called bulls between that three and four o'clock hour. So we're thinking we're gonna drop into this big basin we've been trying to get to. That's where the elk are gonna be living. We're gonna call a bull in, and birthday boy here is gonna shoot a birthday bull. Or be Mac. Or be Mac. Shoot a birthday bull or trap. Either one. Either one. Either, Either one. one. We'll take it. Or I might just take his bow and show him how to do it. <laughs> Somebody might need to do that. Alright guys, we are climbing out of this ridiculous hell hole. I think that we can classify it as that. Here's what I want to know. Would you rather climb up out of a gnarly hole or would you rather descend into a hole? Let us know in the comments which one you like better. I gotta tell you, as terrible as it is climbing out of this thing, I would rather go up than down. Let us know either way. I think, I hope we're close to the top. But we'll see. We're entering into the abyss. Zone. That's where the elk are feeling the safest. You got pressure from up high, you got pressure from down low. 
So tomorrow we're gonna camp up here somewhere tonight, and then tomorrow we're gonna go through that zone. And we'll see if that's where the elk are. The most sign we've seen has been this section right here that we've hunted. But I think there could be even more down low, so. All we have to do is find them, and I think we'll have a chance on them. That is fact. We've had several close calls after initial early success, and uh, we're definitely earning all, all of this. Our opportunities, successes, we had some failures. Excuse me. It's Trevor. He really likes to, you know how there's people out there that like to hear themselves talk? <laughs> at 50 yards. That's a cool like a freight train. After he shot? Yeah. When he he his bull ran by, like it right bumped here. that other bull. And he was and like... Turned and walked away and I shot. Bull ran by you guys after he shot? Yeah. yeah. I filmed it. 
Do you to go have there was another bullet. Can't tell. It's like just a flash of like freight train. No. Uh, dude, that first oh, Colin when he just came. Listen, that was right now. <laughs> he was right in our face. I don't know. He was all it's so crazy. Five you could be so close. Yeah, five point. <laughs> five point. <laughs> dude, that first one though, where he just came over that little knoll. It was like 15 yards. Yeah. You got arrow. You got how much penetration you think? Oh, it smells like blood. 18 inches. 18 inches. There. No broadhead. 18 inches. Like the broad. No broadhead. Broke off. Yeah. That maybe that opposite shoulder, huh? So Trevor shot. Uh, he felt good about the shot. It sounded good. But he had about 18 inches of penetration when we found his arrow about 15 yards after he shot him. Looked like 18 yeah, inches of right penetration. Back here yeah, we didn't find right blood there. right away, but we got blood right here, which tells me he might be going up that way. It's off his left. So we're about 30 yards past where he shot. We gave it about 45 minutes. Uh, we're just following blood, hoping for the best. It's always the worst, man. As soon as you pull the release that arrow it's, until you find the animal it's, it's the worst lots of anticipation but feel good about feel good about this one birthday ball that that was a low shot <laughs> <laughs> and he's a five point. Oh, birthday bull for the birthday boy. Good job, Good brother. Shot. Happy birthday. Thanks, man. Smoking. Thanks. I smelled him back there so, when that big spot hit, and I'm like, oh, he's close, man. Is he low? Shot low? Hard. Yeah. Low. So he probably got part hard of hard. Yeah. He, he was quartered away. That's he hard was shot. just a little bit. Man. <laughs> Trevor. Oh, yeah. You killed the birthday bull. <laughs> Goodness. Yes! Thank you, buddy. What a beautiful animal. Look how big he is. Thank you, guys. Let's do it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Weaver. Happy birthday to you. Good <laughs> job, man. Great shot. Oh, Worked our butts off for that one. Gosh, that was awesome. The amount of emotion going through my soul was almost more than I could bear. Uh, you and me both. Literally almost had a chance to kill every single elk. That we've every seen. single day we've been out, huh? It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> You're good, you need some Throw a little bit of fat on top of it to get a worm, and you just kind of coat it as it warms up. It's about as fresh as you can get it. It was never even cooled off. It was still warm. I just cut a piece of this off the uh, back quarter. I literally just cut it off, cut the back quarter off, cut this piece off, and walked over here and started cooking. <laughs> Looks good. I, I know my job's around these, these parts. You gotta hold that up for me after you cut it off. What you got there, bro? That's why we do it, fellas. Right there. This is Trevor's trophy backstrap shot. Bam! Clean! Yep. Easy down. Yeah. Well, guys, we're coming to a close. We got the bowl broken down, meat poles right over here, and uh, just warming up by the fire before we go to bed. I would say this is one of the best birthdays a guy could ever ask for. So, thank you so much, guys.
appreciate all your help. And uh, heck of a roller coaster for me this week. Um, and I'm just, I just feel so thankful that this is how it ended um, with some of my best friends in the whole world. So. Thanks for sticking with us, guys. And uh, tomorrow we're gonna see if we can find BMAC one in the morning, and then we'll pack out my bowl. We still have, I think, three days, three full days left to get it done here in Montana. So, thanks for following this series. We really, really appreciate all of your comments and um, just your your kind words and attention thank you so much and uh, we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>